Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Unity 3D Editor tutorial series. In this tutorial, um, we're going to cover light maps. Um, in the last tutorial, we covered using light maps with the Indie version, but in this version, we are going to cover some things that you get with the Pro. And if we go to light mapping and then to bake, actually, you know what? We will give this its own section. All right. Er, actually, we'll just expand it a little bit. All right. So you'll see that last time we turned off light balances. And that's because if you have Pro, by default, light balances is on. Now. What we're going to do really quickly is we're going to game object, create other, we're going to create a cube, and we're going to position it at 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to scale it at 10, 0 0.1, 10, and then I'm going to duplicate it, and on the Z, set it to 1, uh, sorry, 0 0.1, and I'm going to put it on the end try to match it up as best I can and I'm gonna raise it up 0 0.3 all right that should do actually you know what 0 0.2 all right now what we're gonna show is uh, using the uh, global illumination part that you can do with pro inside of beast light mapping to actually light your scene without any lights um, so I'm going to create a new folder in tutorial assets and I'm going to call this materials and I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to name it red emiss and in our shader left click self illuminating diffuse now um, normally uh, you might not just use just a static color but normally you would have your diffuse texture and you would have a second texture made and we will actually do that in another tutorial and it will basically overlay on top of your diffuse and it will just emit alternatively you could just use your diffuse as the illumination uh, but that may not work so well and I'm gonna set this to 5 and I'm going to drag and drop it on our border and I'm going to duplicate it alright now I'm going to select both of these duplicate and rotate alright and I'm going to create a new game object put it at zero I'm not going to bother with uh, renaming anything I'm going to mark them as one and then I'm going to set it to static now, we've set it up just like we did in our previous tutorial, um, and I'm going to give, let's use gray, I'm just going to drop this in, it'll automatically create the material for me, and I'm going to set this to 5.5. Five. Alright, so as you can see right now, if we turn on our preview inside of our scene viewport, it's unlit and it doesn't really look all that great. So now let's finally get to the fun part. We're going to set it to single light maps. And the light mapper will leave quality at high. We will leave number of light bounces to four. Uh, you can adjust the sky color, but I'm going to leave this at default. And you can also adjust the intensity. I'm going to leave this at zero. Um, you can adjust the bounce boost. And as you see right here in the tooltip, bounce uh, sorry, boost indirect light can be used to increase the amount of bounce light within the scene and the intensity of the bounce. If you increase the number of gather rays, um, it will drastically increase the quality. Well, maybe not drastically, depending, but it will also greatly increase the render time. And then you have your interpolation, and you can also turn on enable ambient occlusion. And same as before, you have your 
light map resolution and we're going to leave it at 50 so this will actually bake at a reasonable time and we're going to leave ambient occlusion off because in this little scene here it won't really make much of a difference all right so i'm going to go on ahead and go to file save scene and i'm just going to call this gi test and hit save all right now i'm just going to hit bake And as you can see down here, it's slowly going. Uh, note that this can take quite a while. Um, and the larger and more complex your scene is, it can take a massive amount of time to bake light maps. However, the Beast Light Mapper works great for uh, adding static global illumination to your scene. Um, it would be particularly useful for mobile games where you don't really have the advantages of real-time lighting or shadows. And coming in Unity 3.5, you'll get light probes. So you'll be able to use the baked-in lighting to cast it onto the player. And that will be a quite nice feature. But I'm going to pause this while this goes real quick. All right, so once that is completed, you'll notice that if we enable our scene lighting, you'll notice that hmm, it's kind of bleeding on. Well, not like it's kind of. It is bleeding on to our uh, floor here. However, you'll notice it's not actually very well lit. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a brand new cube. And we're going to position it directly at zero. And I'm going to raise it up. And I'm going to create a new color. And I'm not 100% sure what color, so I'm just going to call this emission. Now, you could really crank up the red, and that would bleed over. Uh, but I think I'm actually just going to keep this one white. So self-illumination, diffuse, set it to 5. And note that this tutorial, and this is just, uh, you know, just for practice and learning. Um, all right, so I'm going to clear it, and you can see the changes when it cleared. It's quite actually noticeable. All right, and now I'm just going to bake. And while this is baking, uh, I should mention that, as with the previous tutorial, um, you'll notice that you have to check everything is static. Um, when you're baking light maps. Uh, any object that's not marked as static will not receive uh, a light map. So that's why I use the hierarchy and I put everything under a game object. So it's very easy for me to know that oh, everything under here is marked as static because I enabled it over here. Alright, so I'm just going to let this pause and I will bring it back when it's finished. Okay, so you'll notice that that made quite the difference in lighting up our scene. I'm going to select our main camera. I'm going to go to game object, align view with selected. Uh, sorry, that would be the wrong one. That would be align with view. All right, I'm going to set the free aspect and I'm going to change the background to black so we can see this better. So as you can see, uh, it's actually quite well lit with no lights in our scene whatsoever. This would require a lot of work if you were going to use nothing but just emission textures to light stuff. Um, naturally using lights would be just as effective. However, if for whatever reason, like say you have some kind of wall lamp or ceiling light, and you just applied a very bright emission to it, you'll notice if we go to the scene here, you get this very nice glow. And that combined with, say, a spotlight, if it's a ceiling light and it's hanging down, you can create some rather nice effects. And you can also see some artifacts due to the fact that the light map resolution is only set to 50. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, please stop by the forums or the IRC.
as well go ahead and follow me on twitter if you'd like to keep up to date with what i'm doing and when new tutorials will be launching and i hope you guys learned uh just remember uh to continue to play around with the light mapper you can learn quite a bit just from goofing off thank you